Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about uh, Flonaport's AI blockchain. It's um, uh, a program that uh, display how blockchain work beyond the scene. We use uh, AI and machine learning uh, methods to create this simulation beyond the scene for the blockchain. Blockchain has a six stops from keys, transaction, after the transaction hash, couple transaction and hash, create a block, block with other blocks connected with the blockchain. And then we talk about double spending and why uh, Bitcoin was the first to solve the problem with double spending. My name is Joseph Bonaparte. I'm Associate Professor in Finance and I'm a Director for Externals. And I also do consulting for uh, institutional companies. Keys. When you join a blockchain, like if you join Bitcoin blockchain or Ethereum, the first thing the system will create for you a private key, a private key that you use it to uh, enter the system. Now, the private key that you create, the system create or you choose, uh, generate also a public key. For example, if your uh, private key is one, two, two, four, five, six, then, then you have a public key that the no, people on that blockchain know the public key, but they didn't know your private key. So every time you change a digit here, a different private key, public key generated. If you change a private key to uh, three, for example, here, then a new public key uh, generated. Now the public key is well known across all the nodes or the people on the blockchain, but the private key only you uh, know what is it. After you have a key, you do a transaction. Suppose you send Bob sent a hundred dollar to Alice, and this is verified. If you change the number here to say no, Bob sent ten dollars to Alice, and you try to sign it, boom, the verification become to be read. That means you cannot change the transaction after you you do it. But if you put the hundred again, you go sign, and then this transaction is verified again because this is the right transaction, and you cannot change it. And this is your private key, and this is a signature that you have when you do a transaction, a signature counts. Hash. Suppose hash is basically, when you have a transaction, the system create a hash. For example, uh, Yosef sent 10 Ether to Sophia. So this message create a hash. Now, if I change a message and I say, Yosef sent 12 Ethereum to Sophia or Bitcoin or Dogecoin or any, any coin, a different hash created. I'm talking about the same blockchain. Now, <clears throat> and I'm assuming we are on the Ethereum blockchain. So it will be Ethereum. Here. Now, uh, after the hash is created, you can do other messages also, but let's stop here, go to the block. What is that a block? We hear a blockchain, but what's a block? And then we go to blockchain. A block has a number, number one, and a blockchain start with the block number one. The cryptographic key, cryptogra cryptographic key, the goal of this is to protect and secure uh, the data. Then you have a data, like Yosef sent 10 Ether uh, to Sophia. And then you have a hash for the block. So the hash has to start with four zeros. So what you do, you do mining. When you mine it, boom, you get zero, 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 zero. So that means this block is already mined. Now, if you change the uh, cryptographic to a different number, then mine it, it takes you back to the original one. If you change it to eight, doesn't work. Uh, Three, for example, doesn't work, but if you put zero, okay. So that is the cryptographic key right for this transaction. That's a block. Blockchain is, blockchain means a block and another block and you chain them. So how does that work? Uh, block number one, this is a block number one, cryptographic key, the data, for example, Yosef sent, 20 ether to Josephine. So that's a data using the SHA-256 technology. The previous hash for the first block is zeros because this is the first block, but the previous hash for other blocks is not zeros. Just only the first block will have zeros. And then you have a hash 
but there are no four zeros in the beginning. Mine, boom, now you get zero, 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 zero. This, ha this block is uh, mine. Now notice this hash become to be the previous hash for the second block chain, and that's the block chain. The chain coming from the hash of the first block become to be a previous hash for second block. Mine it, and this hash become to be a previous hash for the next. Mine it. Mine. This hash become to be the next hash for the second block. So this is a blockchain, as I said, it was widely in supply chain, inventory, uh, uh, I, banks now start doing that. Uh, of course, crypto and metaverse start using also blockchain. And the final topic we're gonna talk about is double spending. Double spending is the double spending when a user or a, a node or a, a blockchain or, or somebody in a blockchain wanna use more coins, send more coins than what the balance they have. For example, if I have 100 Ethereum and I want to give 100 to Alice and 12 to Bob, all what I have is 100. I cannot send 112. So there is something called double spending. We need to prevent the double spending. Now, it's important to understand that Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency that used and we know it. But before Bitcoin, uh, in 1984, the cryptographics and cryptocurrency started in 1984 with the with the gold coin and digital coin. There are other products, but none of them survive because of the problem of double spending. That means somebody has a spend more coins than that they have. So Nakamoto Satoshi Nakamoto, who created the peer-to-peer -peer in 2008, email he wrote and a paper 2009, uh, Bitcoin, <clears throat> it's, he's a father of, or she's a father of Bitcoin, that person. We didn't know that person, but this name Satoshi is not well known. So he or she worked to uh, end the double spending problem. If John, what is a double spending? Suppose this digital wallet, $100 going to John. This is the hash. This is a bigger size zero because of block number one. The current hash here, mine it, everything's just fine. But the truth is, what if John did not have 100 here? You mine it, no problem. Here, you mine it, no problem. You mine it, no problem. But here, the truth is, he transfer only one, $10, not 100. Then the system, you cannot mine it because you have a double spending. John has a negative uh, balance. So it doesn't mine because you have a negative balance. And that's what we call double spending. That means John cannot give Terry, Sophia, or Olivia more coins than what John has. So Satoshi Nakamoto, that person, it creates solved the problem of double spending. And that's great. How we, he did that or she did that using the <clears throat> blockchain, which is a previous hash, become the current hash become to be a previous hash for the second block. And here the system say, okay, John has only one dollar in the first block or the block before. So and now we John got another 10. So she or he cannot uh, spend more uh, because double spending. If, if the system here said John has a hundred, then you mine it, and then you mine this, no problem, no double spending. John has a hundred and another 10, and on all what he spent 15 and 10 and 30, which is 40, 55, he has a 55, no problem. And you can mine the rest. So this is the first thing about uh, double spending. Again, uh, blocks is, there is a hash, the first block become to be a hash for the second block, the previous hash. So that makes the chain, when we say a blockchain, that means the information is available for all the previous information is available in the next block. Now, the final thing is democracy democratization and which block will be the one that's chosen by the system. Suppose in a the system there are three nodes or three blockchainers. Like if you have a Bitcoin, you have a lot of nodes, every person is the node there. So suppose in this blockchain, suppose this is an Ether blockchain, we have only three. In reality, there's more than three, but for simplicity, only three. Node A, node B, 
Node C, all of them, they have the same blockchain rate. So the system, every 10 minutes, Bitcoin have a new blockchain emerge and they give uh, coins. So the, which one is going to choose? They're going to use democracy. If all of them are the same blockchain, then they're going to choose one of those and become to be uh, the next blockchain in, 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 in the system. But what if Node B has a different blockchain? For example, he has a thousand tier from John to others, from Wallet to John, and that node mine it, mine it. Let's mine all of those. And this. Now what happened is it's something very interesting. We have uh, three nodes in the system, but all the no not all the nodes have the same blockchain. In fact, only node A is similar to node B, uh, C blockchain. Node A has a similar a blockchain here to C. We have a similar blockchain, but B is different. So how the system is going to choose the next blockchain, they're going to use democracy, democratization. That means the, the blockchain that most popular among all the nodes become to be the emerging blockchain. So every 10 minutes when Bitcoin has a new blockchain and they give uh, coins, it goes based on democracy. The, the person, the node has a, the most popular blockchain among all the nodes will be chosen. And that's all what you need to know about blockchain from key transaction hash, block blockchain, double spending problem, and the next, how to emerge the next block. I hope you enjoy this video and give us comment in the YouTube. And thank you so much for your time.